Throughout this series, we're going to be cutting small segments to learn and get deeper into some aspects of wildlife, about trees, birds, and different species that we've been seeing. Right now, I'm next to a tiger pug mark. In the parks, we're not allowed to get down, but here we are in a lodge and the tiger happened to pass through this. You could see right here is a pug mark and right next to it is a bike track. So if you come closer, let's study this a little bit. So as you can see, this is the pug mark and this is the tires of a bike or a bicycle. I can't really make sure. Actually, it is a bike because it's pretty wide right here. So it's a bike that has passed through here and the tiger has passed through here as well. Now, first things first, we need to make sure we need to understand this tiger pug mark very well. What are some things that you need to know? First, you need to know who this individual is. I mean, is it a male or a female? Number two, you need to know when this male or female passed through here. Number three is the health of the tiger. So let's, let's take a closer look. What I have right next to me is a phone and we're going to place it next to the pug mark. Now see, I usually do it with my fingers and once I place it next to my, fing next to my fingers, I know that this is a male's pug mark. But we need to get a clear look. So if you have a measuring tool, maybe a scale or, or if you know the dimensions of your phone or maybe your um, multi toolkit, place it next to the pug marks. Our iPhone right here is approximately 5.8 inches. Females have a pug mark about three and a half to four and a half inches. And when it comes to males, it can be from four all the way till five and a half inches. And if I place my phone right here, you can see I said this is 5.8 inches. And this pug mark then is right about five to five and a half inches. The, we're also in a kind of a soil that is sandy. So the pug mark has kind of spread out. The five to five and a half inches or four to five and a half inches has to be both in length as well as in breadth. So see, length is about five to five and a half inches. And here is the breadth. Again, five to five and a half inches. Another thing that gives it away as a male is, if you look, the pug marks are kind of squarish in appearance. We will show you photos of a male versus a female pug marks. Female pug marks are much more elongated, whereas male pug marks are more squarish. especially the pads at the back, these indentations appear more square and these appear more square. So you can actually kind of make a square next to the pug mark. Whereas in a female, you'll only be able to make a rectangle because the toes are a little more elongated and the pug marks itself is more narrow. We need to see how long did the tiger pass here from. Uh, we know it's a male. Now, if you look at the sand, there are some tracks of the vehicle which has passed through here, which is a bike. There are tracks of some birds as well, right here. And a lot of insects have also walked through here. So those have kind of made the pug marks softer. One way of testing it fast and easy is to do a smell test. Ooh, smells musty. <laughs> I'm kidding, I, I don't have as good scent at, as Tiger does. Uh, I'm gonna sit a little more comfortably. I don't have as good a sense of smell as a Tiger does, so I can't really say that the Tiger passed here at certain hour uh, just through the smell. But other Tigers can, and that's how they communicate with each other. Tigers actually sweat through their, through their glands in the, in the pug marks or the paws, and that's when a tiger is moving, that's why sometimes they're sniffing the ground, they're sniffing other pug marks, they're sniffing the, uh, the spray marks, the trees. So how do we find out how long did the tiger go here from? Or rather, how do we find out how old the pug mark is? So let's take a stick, okay? And let's choose this part of the sand. If you come closer, let's draw a line. Okay, and then let's take a smaller stick and draw the line as well. If you see here especially, since this is a little dry, if you see here, this is very sharp. There's some moisture as well, and here as well. What happens throughout the day is, the sun heats up the soil, the wind blows away the soil, so kind of like the wind blowing away this way.
and you see these are slowly getting softer let's do another comparison okay i'm gonna do draw two lines and one of them i'm gonna make softer whoops sorry let me take something else let's take this okay so this is line number one and this is line number two and i'm only gonna make this softer and then you'll see the difference so over time the wind blows over and you see now that has appeared softer than this one because the edges here are very refined and very sharp so now let's come back to the pug marks if you see here the edges are not as refined the depth of the pug mark is still there because of course the tiger it's a male it's a heavy male so the depth is still there but the edges are not as refined you also might be wondering, Suyash, why don't we see any claws? Well, tigers have retractable claws. So only if they are running, they open this, the, the claws if they're hunting. Um, otherwise, they always keep it closed. So if they're hunting, the claw marks will come, kind of come like this in the stride. Next, we need to see another thing. Where has the tiger come from and where it is going? That's how you track tigers. So the tiger has actually come from here and the first bug marks are right here. If you see, I made a circle. Second one's here and it keeps going. And here you see these are not bug marks. These are bug marks. These are hoof marks. These are of cattle, domesticated cattle. Again, since we are outside the national parks, domestic cattle come in and out. And the tigers probably come out to either mark his territory or actually hunt uh, the domestic cattle as well. Sorry, Himanshu just had a slip. Let's keep following them. See, tiger, domestic cattle. Tiger, domestic cattle. Here you see the comparison. Fight, tiger, domesticated cattle. Here you have some other pug, hoof marks, not pug marks, sorry. Can anyone guess what this is? These are of cheetal deer. Let's keep walking. So see now, the soil here is completely changed. Okay, it is hardly anything is visible because it's so hard. So what do you do now? We know that the tiger is walking this way, so we keep following it. And I see kind of a riverbed going down. So I'm just gonna go till there and see if there are bug marks. If there aren't any pug marks, then I have to spend some more time trying to figure out which position it is that the tiger will go towards. So we have some more hoof marks here. Right here. More hoof marks, more hoof marks. Ah, there's a pug mark. Here. Again, these are very nice, the imprint. Again, we can see that these are old because other animals have walked through here and when the other animals were walking, the sand has kind of um, sprinkled onto our pug mark as well. There are two bikes that have passed through here. There are humans that have passed through here. So that is Suyash Keshri's pug marks, but that is not Suyash Keshri, that's someone else. <laughs> so. You see, we share our land with tigers. We are here in a private property, a private area. It's a huge, huge farmland. Um, there's a resort as well, but the park boundary is not too far away. And since this does not have many boundaries, the, the area is not fenced off. It's actually good because animals can pass through here as well. We are fencing too many places off. And, and for tigers to pass through here can be slightly concerning because humans and cattle are also passing through here. But this tiger has never caused any trouble. I've never heard of it causing any troubles here besides killing cattle and the cattle owners. Yes, it's a loss to them, but they get fair compensation. Uh, we will cover that in other parts of the episode as well. But that's all I wanted to cover here. The idea is when you get closer to the ground and get away from the vehicle, you can understand so much more. You can, you can gather so much more. And there's so much to learn, especially through tracking. It is a dying art form. I absolutely love it and I wish more people did it in such detail. See you on the drive now.